Hey, I think I'm live. Let me see here. Let me see here. I have to actually check. I don't even know. Are we live? <laughs> I'm just going to wait for people to tell me in the chat. Um, in the meantime, oh yeah, here we are. Here we are. We're live. Yay. Okay, everybody. Hi. Welcome. Um, this is Kelsey from the Arcane Library, and I see we already have a fair number of people here. Hello. Wow, welcome to everybody from around the, the world, it looks like. Wow, we have a lot of people here. Hello. Um, exciting to have everyone here. All hail Kanupra. Yes, correct. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, today, I, I'm so glad that hopefully our stream does not have the same tech difficulties as last time and we can just jump right in to designing the ranger um this is the first time i'm doing like game design that's not adventure related i think live so this will be really interesting I, I, I guess i can never promise if we'll come to good ideas but i hope so um oh cool we've got hi from the uk puerto rico where is everybody tuning in from actually from mexico awesome um <laughs> from mars <laughs> Pretty far, pretty far. Um, awesome, awesome. Okay, good stream so far. Yeah, I, I uh, got um, accused last time of being an unprofessional uh, streamer and I was like, thank you for noticing. So <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm no pro. But all right, we've got Miami, Washington, Montana, Milwaukee. Hey, I know that place. Um, Texas, New York, oh, Pennsylvania. So cool, wow. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I hope this is a decent time for everybody. So, okay, uh, enough jibba-jabber. I'm actually going to start working now on our design, and I, I hope that with some of the chat's input, we'll be able to get started on a cool ranger design for Shadow Dark RPG, which is one of the stretch goals that we hit. Um, we hit an incredible stretch goal. I, I, again, would never have guessed at 750k. Um, and we were going to originally design one new class for the game, but there was a, an immense amount of... Um, you know, split voting between the ranger and the bard. So, um, so we decided to do both because people want to both so badly. Um, but we're starting with the ranger. I think I, I, I am guessing it's going to be a slightly easier design since I am not intending to make the ranger be a spellcaster. Um, spellcasters are always a little bit more complex to design. So that is that is what we're going to start with, and we'll ease into this character design process. And I want you guys to see how I do this and. Um, maybe here's some of my considerations for why I design classes in a certain way. And, um, you know, especially considering how they will stack up against the four core classes, which are kind of our, our guideposts for, um, you know, what we're designing against really. Um, and so I want to start off too, by saying that the mentality of design for classes for Shadow Dark, it has never come from a place of, uh, balance. So, you know, balance is kind of a sacred cow and yes, classes need to, to have, uh, you know, a somewhat equal level of effectiveness overall in their lane, you know, against each other. But, um, I am never, I've never designed classes with the goal of having them stack up in a perfectly balanced way against the other classes. You know, rather, I think that at least for the mentality of, of Shadow Dark, um, I want each class to excel at its chosen, um, skill set, you know, probably far beyond what the other classes could achieve, but also enough to make it feel cool because, um, you know, we look at things that feel cool in D&D throughout history, like design elements that feel fun and cool. Um, maybe a primary example is a fireball spell. Fireball has never been balanced, and that's why it's such a standout spell. It's it's not even technically balanced in 5th edition, which is a game that, that cleaves more closely to, to balance-based design. Um, you know, than, than others might. So, um, yeah, that's, that's one of the things about fourth edition. I played a ton of fourth edition, everybody. I played every edition of D&D. I played fourth edition for years. I, I was lucky enough to play in a campaign with an excellent group of people from levels, I was a player levels one through 30 over about three years in fourth edition. So I gave it a try. I gave it a try. And, um, while the game itself was super fun, the players were great. The game master was great. The system itself was so balanced that I sometimes felt like none of us were any different from each other. So anyway, that's just something I learned about uh, fourth edition from having played it 
a lot. <laughs> so, okay, let's jump in now. Ranger. So this art by my wife, Jessie, she did an awesome piece of art for us. Um, we're going to get rolling on it. So let me jump over to InDesign here. So I'm going to write directly into the layout because this is kind of just how I do things. But um, the, I didn't do any pre-planning on this apart from a little bit of research, which I always do before I design a class. Um, uh, I always try to look back through the design of the core classes, going back all the way to, to you know, the little brown booklets like first edition, which there was no Ranger back then. Um, I think the Ranger first came out in um, the, the, the magazine that became Dragon. Um, now it's escaping me what it was called. Um, but it didn't, it wasn't called Dragon, you know, and it, it was actually like optional material for the game before it got officially rolled out into the AD&D first edition book. Um, so why am I not allowed in restricted mode? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know what that means. I'm sorry in the comments. So I'm seeing, um, oh, people are excited about uh, whether we're going to do dual wielding or not. Um, yeah, what's really interesting about the history of the ranger is that like the Driss Duerden style ranger of dual wielding was kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy because dual wielding wasn't really an emphasized trait of rangers. In fact, I don't even think that was a thing for them in their earliest designs. Um, and, oh, it was strategic review, Wyvern, thank you. Yes, it was the strategic review is when the ranger first appeared out in the world. Um, that and and so they didn't really have uh, dual wielding then. Dual wielding was a thing that the drow could do, um, and as Driss became a really popular representation of a ranger, I think that the second edition AD and D like drow's um, abilities kind of got crossed over with the expectations of what a ranger could do. So it became like a you know like a snake eating its tail, where because Driss was the iconic ranger and he could dual wield, not because he was a ranger, but because he was a drow, it became expected that rangers could dual wield. So I'm still on the fence about whether we're going to do that for a ranger. I, I've It's probably the most asked question in the Shadow Dark Discord. Um, people say, is there dual wielding in the game? And as of now, there's not, because um, that was a way for me to keep the action economy um, contained, you know, we're trying to keep people from making tons of rolls and have a one effective action they can take on their turn. And I also think dual wielding really complicates um, the optimization strife that people experience because if everyone can dual wield, then you are not optimized unless you do. And so then everybody wants to dual wield and then the action economy becomes very uh, you know, impacted by that. And then there's arguing about who has to hold the torch and holding the torch becomes much more of a penalty than it ever was because now you're not dealing damage or attacking twice. And so those are a lot of reasons why I did not make dual wield a, a standard um, practice in the game rules. And I, d I never intend to, but maybe a ranger will be able to in some capacity. So um, you know, I'm really interested to see you guys. So in the chat, I'm very interested to see what people think about dual wielding for the ranger. Um, do you guys want to see dual wielding or do you not want to? We're seeing skip it. Saw some other RPG where dual wielding lets you roll both dice and take the higher value. Right, There's if we were to implement dual wielding, it would not be making two attacks. Um, it would not ever be making two attacks because our action economy would get... Uh, that would just open the floodgates for letting the action economy get out of control. Um, like, I can't endorse it. Um, wield a torch and a short blade. Could you? No to dual wielding. Interested in seeing how a half caster would work. Um, we have half casters in the game for sure already. And I think one trend that we see in, especially in 5th edition, is that most classes are actually half caster at this point. Um, and I, I think, personally, I'm not a huge... I don't love that because I think that it um, it reduces the perceived value of magic and it makes martial classes um, feel like they can't excel unless they have access to magic. So Aragorn dual wielded with a torch and a sword. He did, you know, my model for this class design is Aragorn. I think Aragorn is the iconic ranger. Even before Drist, we had Aragorn. Um, and I think that it is extremely cool. Um, to use him as our baseline because he, in my opinion, is like the ranger I think of. Um, Anti-dual adds to many roles, no magic in ranger, right. So we're not we're not doing magic, that's already a given for sure. Um, although 
could rangers have some form of, uh, you know, non-martial skills or talents? Yes, absolutely. I think they will. Um, so, okay, dual wielding. Hmm. So no, if only for the optimization argument. Um, right, because another thought here is that um, rangers are often really um, excellent archers. And so now we're thinking here with the ranger, because it's going to technically be a semi-official class, <laughs> um, one of the biggest things we have to think about, how do they stack up against the fighter? And that's actually why I have a fighter open right now. So you guys can see on the screen, hopefully, that um, you have, we have the fighter class pulled up. And uh, I'm going to be looking at this in Crawford, referencing it as we design the ranger, because I think um, these two classes have crossover. I also think the ranger might have crossover with the thief, because um, by and large, a ranger, in my opinion, is, is a stealthy fighter that excels in the wilderness. Um, now we have never done an overland travel style class before, partially because the overland travel rules for Shadow Dark were not available until a few days ago when we released the PDF to everybody. So um, now that we know them, we might be able to make the Ranger the class that actually most, most impacts the overland travel and hex crawling process. Um, so right away, I actually want to incorporate something like that because to me, that's a key element for the Ranger. So <laughs> let's actually get started designing. So you can see I have some like placeholder stuff here. Um, we'll decide all of this in a minute, but first of all, I want to make something that would make the ranger the best at overland travel. Um, and I don't want to overthink this, but, um, oh, bye to people who have to leave already. It's okay. Um, for the people that, that haven't seen this yet, overland travel is essentially a process of making, um, Intelli intelligence checks. Um, why is that? Well, it's because I feel that uh, overland navigation is a learned skill. It's not a, an instinctive thing. Um, and especially in Shadow Dark, we, I've keyed learned skills more strongly to intelligence. Like administering first aid to somebody is a learned skill. Um, so it's, it's based on intelligence. And I know that disfavors the healer types uh, like priests who, who use wisdom, but that's just how it is. <laughs> That's just how it is. So, okay, um, right away, I, I think that it is a very simple thing to give rangers advantage on uh, navigation checks. So um, I, I wanna, what are we gonna call this, I guess? I think we're just gonna call it, we'll call it navigation for now, that's not very special, but navigation. So um, when I'm looking at other classes, I wanna see exactly, like a good thing to look at is the thief. Like how did we word some of the thief stuff? So thievery, um, you're adept at thieving skills. So we'll say um, you are adept at navigating in the wilderness. Um, I don't think that uh, rangers necessarily need tools of the trade or any particular items for this, um, but uh, uh, you have, Oops. Wow. You have advantage on navigation rolls. And um, I also want to incorporate some, some call out to the fact that um, rangers have, you know, survival skills. Um, so you have advantage on navigation rolls and um, you know, checks associated with survivalism. So that could fall into a wide range of things, right? And we, again, we're trying to leave this open-ended because we can't, if we try to define every situation in which a ranger would use this, then that will preclude situations we didn't think of that would make sense. So I, I try to leave things contextual. So if we, you know, and for the thief, I did specifically define certain things because thieves are so specifically keyed to dungeon crawling. Um, and over the 50 years of D&D, we've kind of established what their specific uh, abilities within a dungeon setting should be. But I think that I've never seen a list of like skills across any edition that I think has consistently survived the test of time where like it is only these skills that, that make sense. I think, I think that um, survivalism would probably include foraging. 
I don't know if it would implicitly include tracking off the top of my head, and that does matter. So, hmm. Because tracking is another really important thing. That was another big talent that Aragorn had, partly because of his heritage, um, but also because, you know, he just had the the very sharp half-elven eyes. Um, I think, okay, adept, it does not mean advantage. What Does that mean that in other places you use the word adept, it does not mean advantage already? Um, Ryan, no, that's a good question. I, th I think if somebody's adept at something, probably they would get advantage on it, but I just like to explain the, the meaning behind the ability a little bit by, you know, using those words. So I think, I think this is a good call associated with tracking and survivalism. Um, you have advantage on navigation rules and checks associated with tracking and survivalism. So the good thing about this is that um, tracking and survivalism could actually um, make sense in the dungeon environment as well. You know, I don't want to limit those to only being used over land. Um, but uh, so, you know, uh, ma I, don't, I don't even want to call this necessarily like master of the wilds because we do want to make sure that the ranger has abilities that... that while useful in overland navigation, are not exclusive to hex crawling. They, they need to have some abilities that also work in a dungeon crawling environment. Um, so yeah, I think that maybe navigation and wilderness master, I, you know, I, I think that honestly they should be good at both. Um, Ranger would be better at dual wielding than any other martial class. Yeah, wow, I'm actually seeing, this is so funny because when we came into this, I was expecting a lot of people to be really uh, excited about dual wielding design, and I'm seeing a lot of people say they don't want that. Um, not making rangers heavy on utility and not extra special on fighting. So here's the thing, rangers were better fi than fighters at fighting in first edition. They were a specialty class where you had to have a, a high... Um, set of ability scores to even take the class of a ranger, and they started off as equal, if not better, um, martial classes than ordinary fighters. And that has changed greatly over time. Um, rangers became, uh, you know, they were still good in third edition, if I recall. They were pro probably as good as fighters. Um, fourth edition, they were actually really good. They, they, they did a lot of, they were combat focused, but they were what you would call like a striker class, high damage, um, and high mobility. And then, uh, fifth edition, I think Rangers kind of have been perceived as, as one of the weakest classes, um, because they had a focus on, um, dual wielding, but also animal companions and stuff like that, which I have absolutely no interest in including for Rangers. Sorry. I don't say what that, like, why do they have, like, what is an animal companion came from Guinevere just, um, you know, they, or perhaps other rangers that had um, some connection to animal friends. Anyway, I don't think that, that, I honestly think that has always been a strange design choice for rangers, and I don't intend to include that. Um, yeah, ranger is like a survival specialist. And here I'm thinking about um, some of the Conan the Barbarian stories of, um, there's some stories where, you know, Conan was uh, acting as a ranger, um, actually called a ranger, I think, in, um, his whole thing was about um, being a guerrilla fighter and sort of a sneaky survivalist in the in the situation of that story, and I really do think that's what a ranger is for. Their 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 whole thing is that they're patrolling the wilds to keep civilization safe, and so they're very familiar with and they they act in small teams. So they're not like an army. Um, they're not a trained military group. They're not um, necessarily even operating in groups at all, except maybe very small teams. And so um, in that situation, bows become very important and um, stealth and navigation becomes very important. So I think that's how we're going here with the ranger. Um, so this is something I think we need to do right away. Rangers, the best bow in the game right now is the longbow and it's only available to the fighter as a core class. Uh, that needs to change, so now it is uh, rangers are proficient in the longbow. It is the highest damage, highest ranged weapon in the game. It's, it's essentially a class feature for fighters, and now it's a class feature for rangers. I think they deserve access to it. Um, I also want to consider what other bows... I, I think it's important to give the ranger access to short bows and long bows, because you never know what they're going to need or find. Bow, short bow, long bow. We're just actually, you know what, we're going to go in. I'll fix capitalization and stuff as we go. But, um, you know, looking at, for example, the fighter, they have all weapons. I don't think we're going to give all weapons to the ranger. They're specialists. 
armor and we're not going to give all armor um i think that uh rangers are going to be proficient in leather and I, in fact i actually think they would be proficient in chainmail. um aragorn is our guiding force there um and let me see, leather armor, mithril chainmail for thieves. Well, I think we're going to say leather armor and chainmail for um, rangers. Um, chainmail has the potential to be one of the best armors in the game um, for high dex characters. But the trade off is that uh, high dex characters are giving up some melee ability because, in the core rules, um, there is no finesse weapon that's that great. And that's by design. You know, I, I released Scimitars in Curse Scroll 2, which are a D6 damage weapon that has the finesse property as optional. Um, because I think that uh, protecting the combat ability of the fighter in, in the core system, the combat superiority of the fighter is extremely important because fighters easily become irrelevant if you don't do that. Um, especially as magic users, you know, at, at about fifth level, we hit this inflection point where magic users start to become the, the, the damage dealers. And that's the natural progression in a D&D style game. And I wanted to keep that relatively true in Shadow Dark. But, um, but yeah, no, I think that fighters are easily stampeded because people often forget that access to weapons is a class feature for them. The good weapons exist for the fighter. And so being careful about which weapons you give access to is a way to protect the fighter's importance. Um, so that's why the ranger's gonna be, we're gonna be careful. But let's see, so hand axe, long sword, also proficient with spears, um, the ranger background. There is a ranger background in the core rules. Um, and in fact, fighter is even a neutral fighter, I think. It, I think that their titles actually include... Uh, oh, no, actually, I didn't. Um, Ranger is not included as a standard title, I don't think, um, for fighters, which is fine. I, you know, I, I actually, I love titles. We probably won't do titles on air today because it was really just a lot of poking and thinking, and I don't know what we're going to do with Ranger yet on that front. Um, it's thematic. You can, you, there's no actual game impact for a title, like game rules impact, and so I hope that game masters know or intuit that you should really key titles to your game world. And the ones that I provide in the core book are sort of to give you an idea of, of a standard progression for titles or sort of the theme. You know, if you have like a chaotic priest, they're probably some kind of dark cultist. If you have a chaotic fighter, they're probably more of the reaver warlord type. Um, so it's just guidelines there. Um, so for the ranger, we'll, we'll probably deal with titles off screen. Um, spears, yeah, ranger is a background. Um, but sometimes, you know, soldier is a background too, but that doesn't make someone a fighter. So maybe someone was a ranger or a part of a ranging team. It doesn't mean that they actually have the skills of a fully fledged classed ranger. They probably have some of the skills, but they don't get access to the class talents of a ranger. Um, so, all right. Um, scout, oh, darts, dart, or you could call ranger a hunter instead. Uh, we could use that as a title for sure. Um, no swords for rangers or shields. So my opinion is that shields are probably a no for rangers. I'm th hmm. Shields are probably a no. Okay, so rangers are going to be a blend of archer and fighter. They, they probably need to be equally decent at both. Who did Aragorn ever use a shield? No, Boromir did. Boromir was a fighter in my opinion. Um... Hmm, can you guys think of any other iconic rangers that ever used a shield on screen? You know, um, no shields would favor dual wielding. Shields aren't good for longbow wielders anyhow. Um, no two-handed weapons? Well, I think it was the argument that Aragorn wielded a, a bastard sword, a hand and a half sword. <laughs> Please don't censor me, YouTube. It's a sword name. Um... Yeah, I don't think I don't think great weapons. No, because we need to leave the like the great sword to the fighter. That's that's their ultimate weapon or the bastard sword. Um, I think a long sword would be fair. What was Anduril? Was it was it was it a you know the shards of Narsil reforged? Was it a? Would you guys call that a bastard sword or a long sword? I mean, I saw Aragorn. He did wield it two handed. Um, oh hi to the Philippines. Um, Robin Hood never needed a shield. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, no shields for rangers, I agree. Um, no shields, that's for sure. Okay, archers often use swords and bucklers, fair. Uh, yeah, Aragorn could bat daggers out of the air, super cool. Long swords are technically two-handed. Yeah, maybe. Andril is technically a long sword. Do you guys agree that, um, cause like, here's my question. I'm on the fence about giving rangers access to the bastard sword. I think that there is, if we don't give them shields, they will always be wielding it two-handed, meaning that they'll always be getting that higher damage die, which I believe is a d10. Um, let's take a look. So, all right, so we've got our swords here. So um, a bastard sword would always, in, in the hands of a ranger, would almost always be dealing a d10. That's not necessarily true for a fighter. So long sword should be fine. I think a long sword is a good compromise because yeah, we don't want to start encroaching. You could still bat a dagger out of the air two-handed, couldn't you? I mean, with a long sword. Um, I think it is a long sword. Um, so okay, we're gonna we're gonna say right away um, long sword, which you guys might laugh to know that I. Uh, I kept the longsword damage as a d6 for so long during playtesting, and everybody hated it um, because they wanted it to deal d8 because longswords are supposed to be relatively good. And, you know, I had a progression of, of sword damage that made a d6 in context make sense, but ultimately you have to listen to playtest feedback, and everybody was was not happy with the d6, so we upped the... We up the longsword to a flat, non-versal weapon D8 damage. And I'm happy with that. I actually think that, I think that works. Um, makes them good, you know? And, and to note, priests can use longswords in Shadow Dark intentionally. I, I don't, I never really understood the justification for just bludgeoning style weapons. Um, I think it was actually purposefully worked in as a way to prevent um, clerics from having access to fighter style weapons and making them, you know, eclipsing the fighter's abilities somewhat um so that the, I, I always view priests as sort of um like the kind of templar style knights like to me a priest class in shadow dark is is actually um a solid stand-in for a paladin as well i kind of blended the two um and so i i gave them access to a longsword and i don't regret it i don't regret it <laughs> do you <laughs> Um, I think it makes sense for them, and it makes them good in combat. Um, so, so people are saying darts, never. You know, uh, dart, darts are very cool. We don't have darts as a core weapon. Um, not to say we won't ever, but um, yeah, priests are like, yeah, priests are essentially knights. Um, yeah, the no spilling blood blunt weapons only. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think you can still spill some blood with a blunt weapon if you hit hard enough. Um, Mazes and clubs are used to avoid bloodshed on holy ground, true or not. Very interesting. So yeah, that's a really interesting reference there. Cool, but in my opinion, um, not the kind of not the kind of thing that that I want to incorporate into the game design. Um, yeah, rangers should definitely have access to a dagger. This is true. So you know, um, dagger, long sword, long bow, short bow. Let's take a look at the other weapons on our list here and see what makes sense. So I don't think crossbow. That doesn't feel right to me. Dagger, yes. No, not these big swords. Javelins, ah, you know, I don't see a ranger as having use for spear or spear type weapons or javelin type weapons because they already have the bow. They're probably focusing their training on that and throwing a javelin or a spear, especially in like a forested setting, which is their typical setting, at least in my imagination, is silly. Um, I mean, short sword they could technically use, so I don't want to exclude it. Um, short bow, short sword. Um, I think that this list actually makes sense. So they're limited. Um, is this an alphabetical order? No, let me fix this. Um, yeah, alphabetizing by hand will get you in trouble, <laughs> which is why I do it. Um, oh, I hate that it breaks three lines though. Um, long sword, short bow, short sword. Spear, no. Staff, no. Warhammer. I mean, staff, Robin Hood used a staff, but I just don't think it would be necessary. Um, spear and javelin are definitely on theme. Yeah, maybe a boar spear. But wouldn't you, if you had a longbow, I mean, I know spears are like technically what you would hunt boars with, but wouldn't you, couldn't you hunt a boar with a longbow, at least? Um, spear spear 
Mm-hmm. Hand axe. Gotta chop wood. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you need to be able to... I think everyone can kind of use an axe. Uh, plus one AC from weapon in the offhand. Boar spear. People really want the spear. I think it could be done. Can anyone remember a time that a ranger threw a spear in Lord of the Rings? Ah, we'll just... You know what? I think that it... Because it, it is a boar. It's like the ultimate boar hunting weapon. Um, I'm gonna say spear. I don't, I don't really see anything wrong with giving them that. It doesn't give them access to better ranged or better melee. Um, they already have that. So, um, ranger equipping a torch make it last longer? Um, I don't know. We'll think about that. Um, in the heavy woods you can't shoot a longbow very far. That's true. No on spear. Some people are saying no spear, yes spear. Spear makes sense to me. Spear is, is, is a boar hunting weapon. Um, yeah, Princess Mononoke uses spears. All right, Aragorn versus the cave troll. Oh, did Aragorn use a spear against the cave troll? Hmm, cool. Okay, we're saying spear then. I like it, spears in. Um, Aragorn, throw your spear. Oh, hey, Hankerin's here. Okay, um, we're going with spear. Now, all right, so we have weapons. I think this is a good list of weapons because it's, it's not like a ranger could run into a room and pick up anything and start using it. They have to choose the weapons they're trained in, which I'll have a theme to them. Um, and that's good, so okay. So hit points per level, oh, this is gonna be tricky. Hit points per level, this is gonna be tricky because um, here's the thing, old old rangers in, in original D&D had more hit points when they started at first level than fighters. Um, they had, the rangers had 2d8 hit points at first level and they, on it. so on average they have more than fighters who I, I think started with a, D, a d10. Was it a D10? Anyway, Rangers had more on average. So um, did that did that stay the same throughout the editions? Um, hmm. D6 is like usually what I would give a blended role, like a, a spellcaster fighter. <laughs> Someone says D7. 2D8. Start with 2D8. D6. Rangers are tough. Okay. I'm really torn because I, I do think that fighter type classes should, uh, classes that are primarily focused on fighting probably should have a D8. Um, fighters are still going to be the higher damage dealing class on average because I don't believe we should give the ranger some kind of constantly increasing proficiency with their weapon, like weapon master, like fighters have. Weapon master is kind of what defines a fighter. Access to all weapons and the ability to choose one to specialize in. Um, I don't think we're gonna try to make rangers eclipse the, the, the weapon output of a fighter. I think that we wanna make them a proficient fighter. Um, and so I do think we should give them a D8 hit point. That's my instinct on it. A cleric or priest is a D6. And a non-combat character class, like a wizard or a thief is a D4. Um, ranger is most certainly a combat oriented class. So we're, we're gonna give them a D8. Um, D8 per level. Languages. I don't really think that a ranger would have a reason not based on their ancestry to know an additional language. Um, I know that there are languages like Sylvan, which are sort of the the elvish languages, but I don't I don't see a particular reason to give a ranger a class-based language. Um, if anything, they might have a class-based uh, ability to communicate with wildlife or something, but even then, I'm not sure. I think that would fall under survivalism, like reading the 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 demeanor of an animal, for example. I think that that almost anyone would agree that falls under survivalism. Like, is the bear angry and, and preparing to attack, or is the bear about to back off? I think that survivalism would cover that. Um, okay, the kid wolf howl. Um, all right. So, yeah, Sylvan, you know, Aragorn, I think, knew Sylvan or the equivalent because he was half elven and he was raised by Elrond. I don't think that just any ranger would know it. Um, okay, so languages, uh, I don't think we're going to do any special languages. Um, by the way, up here, this, this section that says fill, this is just a description that we'll include for, you know, a flavorful description of what a ranger is, and that's going to be based on how much space we have left in the layout. You know how deep we go on that, so I'm going to leave that for now. Um, okay. What are other things that rangers should be able to do? First of all, um, we're going to have to come up with a talent tree here for them. Um, you guys will notice, you probably have noticed in Shadow Dark, the talents, you roll them, um, but they are based on a bell curve. 
And the reason there is that um, I think that you want to make it very likely that a character will get some generic increases to their um, core abilities. You know, like spellcasters will get increases to their spellcasting bonus. Uh, fighter types will get increases to their um, chance to hit. So, you know, there's always the outside case that someone will never roll that as they're leveling up across five, five rolls or maybe six if you're a human. Um, but I do think that generally we want to put some generic ability score increases into those ranges to make it likely. And also when we're calculating what the average ranger should look like over time, it's nice to know that you can, you can almost guarantee that they'll have rolled that, that range of results once or twice. Um, so, so let me think for just a minute. Now, I think we're going to say like the three to six range. Now let's look at what it is for a fighter. Um, the three to six range is plus one to melee and ranged attacks. I almost want to give that that a similar thing. I almost want to give a similar thing to the to the ranger. Um, man, plus one to melee and ranged attacks because they need to be decent at both. I think we need to do that. I, I think that's just kind of a mainstay of a fighter type. So plus one to melee and ranged attacks. Um, I think we need to have at least that. Um, so the two spot is always something really specific to the, um, to the class. And I don't know what to do with that yet. So, um, the seven and nine slot is usually keyed to ability score increases. Um, I again think that we probably do want to do that for the ranger. Um, so plus two to, uh, strength, dexterity. Or do we want to choose, hmm, plus one to strength or dexterity? You know what? Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to limit them a little bit more. Or plus one melee weapon, or uh, plus one. Mm, damage with all weapons. Giving someone a choice there. This is an interesting conundrum because um, as it stands, rangers have no uh, planned increase to their damage output, uh, whereas fighters get an enormous increase over time to their damage output. Um, yeah, I know we were thinking of intelligence, wisdom. Maybe we should just throw it into wisdom or intelligence because it's used for pathfinding. Um, yeah, I think maybe we should just actually put it on intelligence. Yeah, here we go. I think that, or intelligence, um, or, uh, strength dexterity, or strength dexterity, or intelligence. And then we're going to key some other abilities. So I think first of all, we're going to say, um, I think we're going to say like herbalism. This is one thing I saw coming up in the chat. Um, and I want to key this to intelligence. Um, I do think that rangers have a, an incredible ability to find the, um, the things that they need from the natural world that can provide some healing or something. Um, let me see. Can we have a perception talent? Mm, I don't know. Uh, I have to think on that, but you know, learned intuition. So wisdom and learned intuition, I personally think is inherent to the, to the character and their roles and their ancestry. I don't think that, um, a ranger, I don't think that, a, I think that a ranger is a set of learned skills. Um, and if you are a high wisdom character, then all the more power to you. But I don't necessarily think wisdom to me feels keyed to being a ranger. I think that intelligence is, I think that them learning the skills of their trade are keyed to, to intelligence. Um, including herbalism. So, um, yeah, he was asking, is herbalism tied to survivalism? Probably. Um, so what I'm thinking is, you know, I think that a ranger should have the ability to find needed herbs or needed moss or, you know, needed cave fungi or something that, that could help. Um, and I think it's an interesting survivalism thing for them. Uh, now here's a question. Do we specifically define the, the, the list of things that they could possibly find? Um, you know, yeah, they can prevent forest fires. I'm still thinking on this. Um, 
also like their ability to be stealthy i think needs to maybe be um noted so yeah i might want to say like okay i don't want to make them so we're going to say stealthy um they they absolutely cannot eclipse the um the thieves set of talents and skills we can't accidentally do that but i think that um you have advantage on checks to sneak and hide um i think that that makes sense to me i know that thieves can sneak and hide but they can also do all kinds of things they can apply disguises find and disable traps delicate tasks, climbing, all that. Um, I think that thieves, I think that this gives the ranger access to one of the thieves kind of class talents without entirely eclipsing them. So I like that. So these are not in alphabetical order yet. We will probably figure out how to fix that. Um, okay, so far so good. So in the wilderness, Spencer, yes, it, I think it should apply to all situations. Um, rangers are stealthy no matter where, and that's great. So rangers have stealth out of combat, not necessarily. Um, stealthy in rural locations, I think both, yeah. Um, I know we wanna limit them to wilderness only, but we, we definitely have to consider that the game takes place mostly in the dungeon. And so I wouldn't want somebody to feel like the character wasn't fun to play or had absolutely no access to their class talents in the dungeon. And I don't think that there's any reason why a natural cave would be like, you know, less, uh, easy to hide in than like a forest type setting personally I, I think that there's still a lot of reasons why someone who's adept at finding a place to hide would be good at doing that in almost any environment um no surprise um I almost I this is one this is a really good so Eric brought up a really good point should we give rangers um no surprise type abilities like like what goblins have um the goblin ancestry has that I make every effort not to duplicate an ancestry talent um in class talents you will notice this with the halfling so halfling it would make sense that they would have advantage on stealthy type type things right but that actually makes the halfling the worst thief then because their um their class their ancestry's talent is canceled by their class talents so they actually get nothing for being a thief and it shouldn't be that way so um the same with a goblin i, I don't ever really want to give a, a class um, talent that would that would make someone unable to be surprised because then that makes goblins bad rangers and although a goblin ranger is weird you know i don't want to penalize them for choosing that class um i think that um rangers have proactive ability that's really skillful and i don't know if that necessarily translates into being difficult to surprise you know i want to base that off of their wisdom score um, extra attack per round with bows. Well, extra attacks are pretty much something I am really resist writing into the game. Um, but yeah, I think, let me see, let me, <laughs> looking cool in the corner of the tavern, absolutely. Um, all right, yeah, increase one of their natural senses. So Max Bren, that, you, you brought up a good idea, and here's a trend I'm seeing in the chat. Like, maybe rangers have the ability to increase some of their natural abilities um you know beyond the ordinary and maybe we can attach that to herbalism you know like maybe uh a ranger can um you know find herbs that have the following effect um you know this is just maybe what we could do even is make a cool hmm a cool table of some kind. Okay, you know what I'm seeing too? Um, 10 to 11, so choose one, uh, wait, 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 wait. Plus one, two melee and ranged attacks. Hmm. All right, I have a thought here. Plus one, two attacks and damage with melee. Choose with melee or ranged weapons. Um... Here's, okay, I have to figure out how to word this, but for the three to six talent spot, I actually wanna, I wanna try to set it up in such a way. Okay, I want rangers to have some damage increase, like some damage progression, right? So that they can at least hold a candle to the fighter. Um, but what what I'm thinking here, maybe you guys can help me with the wording, is when if a ranger rolls a three to six talent, they choose, I want plus one to hit and damage in melee, or I want plus one to hit and damage in ranged. They choose one or the other. Um, 
And so that's not giving them the guaranteed boosts that a fighter gets at all times, but I think they'll roll this once or twice in their career. And so they can start to increase their ability, um, you know, in their chosen weapon and, and have some guaranteed extra damage, somewhat similar to what a fighter gets. Um, so three to six talent, melee or ranged, melee and ranged. I think that would be a little heavy. Like not even fighters get bonuses to attacks and damage on both weapon types. So plus one, so choose, so plus one to attacks and damage with melee or ranged weapons. Ugh. All right, plus one to attack, to attack and damage with melee or ranged weapons. Um, mm -mm -mm. I think, is that clear? If you guys read this, does this make sense? Um, plus one to either ranged weapon damage or melee weapon damage. But not just damage, I want it to be attack bonus as well. Um, plus one to melee or ranged attacks and damage. Yeah, plus one, yeah. Oh, Jake, Jake, good call there, buddy. <laughs> I see Jake in the chat. Plus one to melee or ranged attacks and damage. So plus one to melee, ranged attacks and damage. Should I say like choose plus one to melee, choose plus one to melee or ranged attacks and damage. So I think like indicating that you need to choose makes it, doesn't make it accidentally sound like an and. You know, like you have, like, I wouldn't always put the word choose in here, but plus one to melee or ranged attacks, someone could interpret that as like, oh, both, you know? So I, so saying choose, I think maybe helps call it out a bit more. Plus one to melee or ranged attacks and damage. I like that. Um, that's actually very good. That's like probably significantly better than the seven to nine spot right now. Um, mm, actually, is it? They're about even. I think, I think most people want to roll that, though. I think most people would want to roll the three to six. Um, yeah, Matt's saying, is that too strong? Fighter weapon mastery is specific to one weapon. Yes, Matt, you, you bring up a good point, but I think that the, for fighters, the difference here is that it's a guaranteed progression, and for rangers, on average, they'll probably roll this result maybe twice. Um, they could roll it every time, and then they would be an excellent fighter type, but there's absolutely no guarantee, and even still, they will not eclipse the output on damage of a fighter um, because they would max out probably at a human ranger could roll this talent, astronomically unlikely case, could roll this talent six times. Um, so they could choose plus six to attack and damage, which would put them equally on footing with a fighter. And then they would gain no other, they would have no other bo boosts to their other you know, ability scores or whatever, um, having rolled this talent instead. So I think it's very unlikely. Also, rangers don't have access to the, to the same level of melee weapons that fighters do. So I can't think of any scenario in which a ranger would actually outclass a fighter, um, even at the most extreme. So um, need to separate with, with punctuation, choose melee or ranged fighting, get, get plus one attack and damage. Um, if you stack all the same talent when you level it stacks. Yes, your talent stack. Um, if they don't stack, it's specifically called out in the talent table. Um, seven to nine would give more AC, more carrying slots. Yes. So seven to nine is like a utilitarian role. It's, it's overall good, you know? Um, oh, someone's asking what software I'm using. I'm using InDesign. Um, will I open the shadow dark to late backers? Yes. It's open right now to late backers. It is open this very minute. If you go to the Kickstarter, there's a pledge now, like blue button at the top where you can late pledge. Um, so yeah, no, thank you. Um, okay, Justin's bringing up the idea of animal empathy. I think that falls under survivalism in a way, like reading the behavior of animals, you know? Um, yeah, animal empathy is great wording. Plus one AC from offhand weapon instead of an attack. Um, yeah, okay, choose plus one to melee attacks and damage or plus one to ranged attacks and damage. Um, yeah, I think plus one to... Choose plus one to melee. Yeah, this is this is kind of weird. To melee, um, to melee attacks and damage. Choose plus one to melee attacks and damage or range. See, it just doesn't all fit. To melee or to attacks and damage. To attacks and damage on melee or ranged. It doesn't fit. Mm. I hate putting in ampersands, weapons. 
Yeah. Um, and damage on melee or range. Uh, plus one, two attacks and damage on melee or ranged weapons. Hmm, we need to take it with the wording. Um, melee or ranged weapons. Herbalism has talent. Le late pledges are a great opportunity to become legendary. Choose either. Choose either plus one, two attacks and choose. Uh, well, I don't want to perseverate on the wording. We'll get it right. I'll, you know, I'll probably fix this in post and we can just double check that it works. Um, but the concept of what we want makes sense, so we'll just keep it for now. Um, a lot of people would read survivalism to not include animal empathy. Okay, mm, with tracking, so uh, you're adept at, you are adept, uh, okay, so let's see, maybe we should, yeah, maybe we should clear this up. Um, so let's call this like a, well, uh, mm, Naturalist, is that like some kind of naturalist? You have advantage on navigation rolls and checks associated with tracking. Uh, with tracking and survivalism. You have advantage on navigation checks and checks associated with tracking and survivalism. Cheeks. <laughs> you have advantage on navigation checks and um, with tracking, survivalism, or nature. <laughs> Does that make sense? Nature, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, and like I'm, I'm, I'm like hesitant to call this wilderness stuff because I don't want it to imply that it only applies to the wilds. It could also work in like cave systems. Um, calling it a strider would be cool. I actually want to save that as a title. Natural affinity, naturalist, one who studies animals and plants. Yeah, I feel like it's too, it sounds like a job title. Um, yeah, everyone's saying wilderness survival. I think the word wilderness implies the wrong thing. Um, so should we say like, uh, can we just say like survivalist? Uh, what if we say like, you know, um, like adept, like wilderness, yeah, like wilderness, because using the word wilderness implies it doesn't work in caves, right? Um, yeah, like Wayfinder, Wayfinder's cool, that could work, Explorer, Survivalist, um, yeah, like Scout, Outlander is a good one, people might make a lot of jokes about, you know, there can only be one, um, Natural adept guide, scout craft, pathfinder might be good. Um, I just can't stop thinking about the game when I see that word. Is that weird? Wayfinder. Um, you have advantage on navigation checks and checks associated with tracking, survivalism, or nature. I like Wayfinder. I like Wayfinder. I feel like that doesn't necessarily imply that it must be... Okay, so what do you guys think? So like, uh, here's my here's my thing. Voting between Outlander and Wayfinder. So these are the two I'm considering right now. Wayfinder and Outlander. What do y'all think? Yeah, that's Highlander. Right? <laughs> but still, it sounds similar. Jeep Wrangler. Wayfinder. I kind of like Wayfinder because I feel like it really implies a lot of different settings. I like Outlander too. Um, but I think Wayfinder to me sounds a little more proactive, like a little more like this is a thing you can do. It's a skill set, you know. So let's stick with Wayfinder. I really like that. Y'all are smart. Y'all are smart. You guys know the right words. Um, okay. So we have this stuff. We have herbalism. We are perseverating over the wording on this, which I will fix later. I'll italicize it so I don't forget. Um, and let's see here. Italic body text. Okay. So... Uh, let's come back to the herbalism thing for a minute, right? Because I saw some really neat ideas about people, you know, t talking about how maybe the ranger can have some utilitarian skills that involve um, their ability to find useful things in nature. And of course we saw this um, 
you know, is in a really cool representation in the Lord of the Rings movies where Aragorn was finding King's foil to help heal. Um, and it, I honestly think that's a really, you know, strong element to what defines a ranger is just, you know, their ability to, um, to find resources in the natural world. So like maybe a little bit of healing, a little bit, you know, some, maybe some self buffs of some kind. So here's the thing. We, we, we want to make this something that a ranger can't spam, you know, like every round I'm going to find an herb that does X, Y, Z. So I think like maybe we should say, how can we make this not be annoying to track, but also not, like, you know, limited in some way. So, um, you know, plus one to hit points when using herbalism. Mm -hmm. I think they need, um, you know, Strider was smoking a pipe, wasn't he, in The Prancing Pony? Like maybe he was, you know, giving himself come, some kind of self buff because he knew the Witch Kings were coming that night. Um, you know, advantage on certain tasks. Uh, yeah, once per day you can find King's Foil. Um, yeah, once per day. I mean, here's the question. Should we make it like, I know like I, I actually don't mind designing like three times a day type things. Um, but I know people also don't like that. It is a thing you have to track and remember. Um, yeah, like finding herbs. I think it is covered by survivalism, someone is saying, but I want to give, uh, you know, I want to give the Game Master something to go on because if we don't give some defined things here, the Game Master is just going to have to start making herbs up all the time for the ranger like every single time. And I think if a ranger is like, well, I want to find a special herb that does X, Y, Z. I think if we give like a defined list, like even a roll table, um, then that would let the ranger use this ability and, you know, not force the Game Master to come up with something every single time they use it. And it would give them something cool that they can do. Um, so uh yeah if yeah oh obi is 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 doing an this is a genius move dear obi said a check you can make that goes away if you fail i actually really like that because it's almost like spell casting but it's not so that's a great idea um so we're gonna say you know um you know make and you know this is just we'll clean this up make an intelligence make a an intelligence check to find one of the following herbs. If you fail, you can't use this ability again until you complete a rest. And then what I think we want to do is make like a list of herbs, you know, like that have a different, a varying challenge to find, right? So, you know, like as it goes up in challenge, it's like more effective. So that lets the player target an herb that they want to find um and it and depending on how um how good the herb is it's also more challenging and more likely that they'll fail um so this uh, whoever dear ob like you know gold star to you for for leveraging the game mechanics of shadow dark so beautifully that was a fantastic idea and i think we're going to make an herbs table that has like a generic effect set associated with it so that um the ranger could use this in, in almost any setting you know because i know we think of ranger we think of forests but characters travel. You might be in the desert. You might be in a cave. You might be in the volcano regions. So I would rather let the game master come up with a creative way to describe the herb, but not have to come up with an effect on the fly. And we want to key the effect to how difficult it is to find. Um, so, you know, like I need to find King's Foil. Like Aragorn knew that. Um, and he went and found it. So, um, so let me think, yeah, and, and Forrest Z is saying one of the talents should give a bonus of this feature. Yeah, like, that'd be really cool. What if we make, like, the, what if we make one of the talents, like, the 10 to 11 spot, like, reduce the, diff, uh, you know, the culty of finding, of your, you know, of your herbalism checks by one step. Um, so that is to say, oh, what did I do? That is to say that, you know, I'm targeting, you know, darn it, I'm targeting a DC 18 herb, but it actually would become DC 15. And if you roll that again, you're like, wow, I can find a King's Foil only on a DC 12. Um, so that's actually a pretty cool, that's a pretty cool thing. Um, also, maybe we should 
maybe we should key these to like the ordinary, um, I'm gonna actually make a table out of this, but the, the typical uh, DC array for Shadow Dark and then plus like a level 20 something. I mean that, a DC 20 something, that would, that would be fun for the person to be like, oh, I'm gonna go for it, I'm going for the King's Foil. Um, and some of them will be self buffs, some of them will be healing. I think the healing ones are obviously gonna be in the more difficult category. Um, I'm doing a DC nine instead of 10 because that's the ordinary array for challenge on Shadow Dark. Um, you know, yeah, I think I think Hobbit Shire is saying a good idea, which is why not make the herbs more like a spell, um, which is honestly, I think in an ideal world we would maybe do that, but we're trying to keep the options contained. I don't want to really create a scaling spell casting system style system for the ranger, or have to create a whole new page of options and progression. I just I kind of think that keeping it simple will be more useful in this situation. Um, plus one to herbalism checks. Yeah, you could say that. Plus one to herbalism checks. Um, but that only gives you a 5% increase on effectiveness, which is like, as far as a check goes, a little bit disappointing. Um, reducing it by a step. So it's not actually reducing the, the DC by one, it's reducing the DC by a step, which is in, in increments of three. So it gives you a 15% increase. And the reason I think it might be better to do it this way is because we can give advantage once. If someone rolls us again, then there's no real continued benefit increase. So letting somebody have this stack, like let's say you roll this twice, you have a 30%, almost a third improved chance of finding the herb that you want. I think that that's ultimately more effective. Um, so DC9 being limited utility. Well, Edward, I think you bring up a good point. The DC9 one's pretty easy for a, a ranger and we have to consider, are they gonna have advantage on this check as well? Does it like fall under the category of, of their, um, you know, of their wayfinder ability? Um, make an intelligence check to find one of the following herbs. Um, if you fail, you can't use this ability again until you complete a rest. So, um, you know, I feel like their wayfinder, we, we may have to specifically call out whether their wayfinder ability like impacts this. Um, does it give them advantage? I don't think, it, I honestly don't know if it should. Because then it's going to be really too easy. Like they're going to come in at this at a plus four. But then again, let's say, okay, so the average ability score for a character is like 10 or 9. So it would be kind of a shame if a ranger had absolutely no additional, like let's say a ranger has like a 9 intelligence, which is very average in Shadow Dark, so they have minus 1. Um, they get access to this talent, so you know, they can do a thing that's special already. And the worst that happens if they fail is they find nothing. But rolling it a minus one on something like this and then also being like, but doesn't my Wayfinder talent apply to this situation? Um, what do you guys think? Advantage? If we give advantage, I think we may have to start raising the baseline, the baseline challenge from, from nine to 12. Like, you know, um, which, which is no fun because then it also like, we can only put four items here. So I, I think having like one, two, three, four, five items would be fun. Um, and what is the chance of a, I mean like a character like looking for a DC nine thing with advantage, they're inherently getting a plus four if they even have, so like if they're, if let's say they have plus one to intelligence, which wouldn't be too like terribly far-fetched. Um, they would essentially be rolling at a plus five, meaning that they would only fail on a four and they would only fail like five, 10, 50, like about 20, maybe about 20% of the time on average. Um, and then they could definitely start spamming. But, you know, we don't necessarily need to state this. Sorry, I know we're going deep on like theory here and I, I don't know if everybody wants this, but I'm trying to consider all angles. You know, I, I would assume that each herb that you find takes up a gear slot. Um, I don't know if it's worth specifically saying that because I don't want to get super fussy, but I think most game masters would probably rule that the herb you find takes up a gear slot. So spamming it is also limited by your gear slots. Now, rangers are fighter types, so they'll probably have a high enough strength to make it possible to like spam up nine, you know, nine herbs. Also though, do you wanna waste your next five rounds looking for herbs? Five rounds is a third of a gaming session on average in Shadow Dark. Or like 
a quarter of a gaming session. So do you actually want to spend a quarter of the game spamming this um, instead of playing? You know, that's why we play in rounds. Um, so, so anyway, with all this on the table, what does chat think? You know, should we do, should we allow the Wayfinder ability to provide advantage on this role, which, you know, which means that, that, you know, an herb bag take two to three, two to three slots, gear slot for X herbs in, in a pouch. Um, we could limit it. We well, could say you, you can carry up to three herbs at a time. Um, you know, no advantage. Ranger is the one carrying the herbs. Um, don't let us gather them. Ranger's herbalist pouch, herb to something. Herbalism should have a bell curve. Um, I think targeting the herb you want matters. So I don't know if I want to put it on a bell curve. Um, no advantage. The thing about the ordinary like array of, of DCs, it's assuming average ability. So it's not assuming advantage. Um, advantage is a good deal. No advantage, advantage while in wilderness only. I think that's too conditional. Um, like, how, like, if they go for a nine, but they have reduced a step. Um, good question, dear Obi. I would, I would assume that um, you can no longer, once you reduce it down to the baseline step, there's no further reduction possible. Um, so I would keep it at a nine. Um, herbs should take up equipment slots. Yeah, this is uh, this is one of the things that I think about for like an hour before I decide, because I'm like, there are all these factors of the game coming into play on this. It takes up an equipment slot. That's a, that's a thing that matters. Um, it takes up a round. So it's a resource expenditure on the part of the ranger. And you know, like we also have to think, how is this going to feel at the table when you're playing? If you are a ranger and you're like, my friend's dying, I need king's foil and you're rolling for it and you fail, I mean, that kind of sucks because like that's your special skill. Like we don't say that, we don't make casting cure wounds harder for clerics, the priests. Should I change it to cleric before we go to publish? No, <laughs> no, I have to keep it a priest. I, I put my flag in the ground on this. Um, so like, do we really want to like not give them like a benefit on their inherent arrays of, you know, like, huh. We may have to play test it to really know. Like, how much is this spammable? Like, people are saying no advantage, but I feel like it, I, I feel like a ranger should know the right herbs to find and look know where to look, um, which in my opinion would give them advantage. Um, yeah, that's what luck tokens are for. That's true, but luck tokens are very down to how much the game master wants to provide them. So, um, yeah, make it free, has herb stash in his pockets. Um, yeah, yes to advantage. Okay, here's my thought on this. If a, if a class has a talent, classes in Shadow Dark get only very few talents, and they need to matter. Like, they need to be effective. So I'm going to, I'm going to say that herbalism, um, make an intelligence check to find one of the following herbs. Um, your wayfinder talent applies to this role. If you fail, you can't use this ability again until you complete a rest. Okay, because let's assume that most people are gonna use intelligence as a dump stat, even rangers, they probably won't have a bonus. Um, so everyone can search them and give, if only a ranger can do this, then straight. That's my, okay, Fable's d20, interesting point. So if everyone can search for them, no, they can't, in my opinion, I think this is a class talent. If anyone can search for an herb, I mean, I feel like it'd be a, a definite long shot. I mean, I would let someone try if they were like, is there any herb I can use that would help my friend? I would say, well, you don't know anything about herbs. Here's the other thing. Someone with the herbalist background would probably have advantage on this. So then why wouldn't the ranger? That's my question. That's my question. If someone actually rolled the herbalist background, they would already be better at searching for herbs than the ranger who has the class talent. So I, I know this is annoying, but I think my instinct is to leave it as something that they would have advantage on. Um, there's a cost to it. There's a gear cost to it and a time cost to it every time they use it. Um, and it's also very situational. So um, we're gonna make sure that the herbs are not like overly ridiculously powerful. Um, and, you know, oh, someone brings up a good point is like if they, there's a chance that the herb could be icky um, if you succeed, it's no longer spammable. Um, 
let me see. Yeah. So Jean's saying, yeah, the herbalist and ranger backgrounds really mess this up for me. Yeah. You know, there's some crossover, unfortunately. It's true. Um, it's hard to future-proof the background tables. And, and because rangers are sort of a non-core class, I think that we have to allow that, you know, if somebody rolled a ranger background and they're a ranger class, either the game master will have to come up with something particularly special for them, um, or maybe, you know, you have to deal with that in the moment. Um, how when I'm herb kill anything? Uh, there shouldn't be an herb with the nine. I mean, yeah, there shouldn't be an herb with the nine, but like, maybe there shouldn't. Or maybe it should just be like a non-interesting herb, you know, like, um, like you find an herb that replaces the need to like to eat a meal that day or something. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I don't like that. Um, yeah, crit fail should do something. Um, I actually do like that. On a critical failure, <laughs> failure, you find a um, yeah. No, we should. We, we we do need to come up with like. I think adding a crit failure to this would also increase the risk factor. Um, although, when are you ever going to roll a critical failure with advantage? Almost never. Um, so that actually seems like so astronomically rare that I don't know if I would even define it. Um, until check to find one of your following herbs, Wayfinder Talent applies to this check. If you fail, you can't use this ability again until you complete a rest. Um, critical failure and you find the wrong mushroom. Um, you know what we could do? We could bake it in. So we could say like a nine is a mushroom that has a three and six chance of healing one HP or dealing one damage. <laughs> you know, something like that. So like if you're gonna spam the nine, I mean, you're only gonna get like a 50-50 shot on it being worthwhile. Um, yeah, Rangers should be able to live off the land indefinitely, says Jay. I do agree. I think like as, a, you know, um, nine is a ration, maybe. It's kind of, useful but not that exciting. I feel like a ranger could use their wayfinder ability to just find a ration, like a hunt enough to find a ration, so I feel like there's too much crossover there. Um, yeah, crit fail, poison ivy, very itchy. <laughs> um, yeah, the herb could be location specific. Yeah, we want to make it not location specific. Um, you know, and like we could make the nine that, but like the, the person is gonna be stating what they wanna try to find, right? Cause that's gonna define what the DC is. So I don't think if, if the nine was a bad result, anyone would bother. So I think giving it a chance. Yeah, John is saying maybe we should reduce it to a two and six chance of uh, healing one HP. A uh, mushroom that has a two and six chance of healing uh, Actually, let's say a four and six chance of healing one HP or two and six of dealing one damage. Uh, well, otherwise it deals one damage. And you only know that after you eat it, right? Um, Four and six, two and six. I mean, but it has to kind of be 50-50 for it to um, not be spammable. I like it being 50-50 personally. I'm going to leave it at that. I know it's kind of annoying, but yeah, like, yeah, you, 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 you have like an almost guaranteed chance of finding a mushroom. Um, very unlikely that you would fail. And it's a 50, it's a coin toss of whether it's good or bad for you. And if you, you know, if you do this three times, you, statistically, you're going to get at least one that heals. Um, uh, and it let you know ahead of time, which it is. I don't think so. <laughs> it has a three inch chance of healing. Otherwise it deals one damage. Um, otherwise it deals one damage. Um, unknown before eating. No, it has to be, it has to have an actual risk to it. If you know, then you, then it's then, um, mushroom. I'm gonna say mushroom. Three and six chance of healing HP when eaten, otherwise it deals one damage, unknown before eating. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta risk it. Um, yeah, one mushroom equals one slot. It's gonna have to. I mean, otherwise it's too spammable. 
yeah so like small things like vials are one slot and like when you find a, a like a live mushroom out in the wild sometimes they're like you know they're they're chunky um administering the herb taken action i think that's covered by the um the uh you know like parallel actions in the standard rules i don't think it would take an action to eat or administer a mushroom the same as a potion um yeah, you, so you would know which mushrooms are bad for you generally, but some are super similar and not even mushroom experts sometimes can tell the difference until they test a mushroom. Um, uh, punishment for success seems harsh. I mean, I'm not gonna make, I'm not gonna make punishment for higher level mushrooms, but essentially the, the, the level nine, the, the DC nine is so unlikely to, to meet failure um, that it needs to have some risk to it. Uh, if they're rolling with advantage, even if they don't have an intelligence bonus, they're still very likely to pass. Um, yeah, uh, wizards have to roll one for a bad spell. No, wizards lose the spell on a bad outcome. Um, so, yeah, let's see. A mortar and pestle. Does anyone know what program I'm using? I'm using InDesign. Um, one and one, but I don't see spam even if it took no slot. DC9 and a wounded prisoner. Each of these had an inverse effect. Immune to sleep. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Crit, crit fail, you find a random encounter. Um, crit fail is so unlikely with advantage that I don't even know if it's worth defining. Um, wouldn't risk it if you weren't sure. Agreed. Um, not a fan of a healing damage. That's fine. Um, four to six is better. Bad mushroom needs tracking. Punishment for a roll that you could lose the ability for it is a bit harsh. Yeah, definitely I'm keeping it. <laughs> No, we're gonna make the good the good things that you can find worth it. Um, yeah, nine exists to to put the others into context and to make it. Uh, you know, if you want to spam it, you can. If you don't, then no need. Because healing one damage on a dying person makes them stop dying. It's it's extremely impactful. And dealing one damage to a dying person has no rules as written effect on them. So it's essentially like a no loss type situation. Um, one damage is like too minor to do anything that you know if someone was at one hit point and they wanted to eat that mushroom i think that would be a foolish decision and if the only use case for this mushroom that i could possibly think of would be someone who was dying and administering someone a poisonous mushroom when they're dying has no actual game effect so the only thing that it could do would be to help them um so <laughs> So the second one, and if they fail, you could bust out your second mushroom and give it another shot, basically. Um, it's essentially giving you the ability to stabilize on contact with a 50-50 success rate. Um, so in my opinion, I think that's fair. Also, I have to be really harsh on me, otherwise I'll make every class awesome <laughs> with absolutely no potential drawback. Um, so, the, you know, the, it's actually I think the most difficult thing about designing classes for Shadow Dark is restraint. Um, and, and thinking of the actual use case for it. So in my opinion, that's the best use case for this. That's probably what it will be used for the most. And since there's no actual downside to dealing one damage, um, it's not as impactful as it sounds. So, all right, let's see. Lichen or moss, what did Matt say? So you give advantage on the nine by default, but no advantage on the others. Um, I think that's very difficult to define. I, I, think that the, I think that you're definitely thinking in the right direction. Um, like that is a, that is a sound idea. I just think that it might be a little too fiddly for the space we have and for the, the way, I don't want people to have to constantly, um, deal with contingencies on this. Um, get to choose an additional herb. You can give advantage on the nine by default, but no advantage for the others. Talent could be to choose an additional herb to get advantage on finding. Yeah, it's, it's a cool idea. It's a cool idea. I just think it'd be a little hard and fiddly to implement in this case. Um, 50 helpful, 50 no effect. 50-50 mushroom, the barbarian could administer to you when you're dying. Basically, yes, you can give them to people. They're an item. Um, no other class has a chance of finding these herbs. The ranger's the only one that can do it. So does he really need an additional bonus? Yeah, Rush, I was definitely considering that. Um, but I think that uh, having a class talent that never works for you is sort of unfortunate. So you might as well make it you know, the same thing as a thief has advantage on all their class talent, you know, skills. Um, obviously, they're going to already have a high dexterity if they're a thief, so their chance of success is higher than most anyway. But it still is important to give the specialist the specialty, you know? Like, give them the advantage. Because again, if someone had rolled the naturalist background or the herbalist background, 
they would have advantage on something like this. So then why wouldn't the specialist? So that's just my thought. Um, okay, herbalist should stay as a background. I think herbalist is a cool class feature for a ranger specifically, um, which is why we're defining it in a new way that other classes don't have access to right now. So, okay. Uh, cure for increasingly bad conditions. Oh, that's cool. Ben, I think that a cool one would be, um, you know, I think the 12 should be like stops the effect of a poison. You know, like cobras in this game will put you at uh, zero HP with a death timer of one. So like, that's it. If you get bit by a cobra and you fail, like it's, it's pretty bad. So something like this could be really helpful. Um, very conditional. And so I don't think it's overpowered. Okay. Um, you know, stop the effects of a poison. I guess you could stack up on these. Stops the effect of a poison. Um, yeah, you could for sure stack up on them, but again, it takes a gear slot. So um, well, we'll, have to, we'll have to see how this plays out in testing. So, all right, maybe we should, maybe we should look at um, a few other cool options for some herbs. You know, like let's come up with some ideas. Um, the po cure poison and paralysis. Yeah, like curing effects are really great. Um, do herbs go bad after a day? Should they? Because I guess I could see a ranger just loading everybody's open gear slots up with these things. Yeah, 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 that might actually be a consideration. Um, you know, uh, let me actually just change the layout. I'm actually gonna probably put like a small table in here. Um, but for now, I just want to reduce this spacing so we have some room to work with. Uh, herbs stay uh, effective for one day after being found. Retain their effect for one day. That actually is a really great limiter right there. <laughs> Effectiveness fades when they're not fresh. Hi, Greg. This I wanna consider leaving in here. I wanna consider it because like, here's the use case I think. Um, I think that a ranger is going to try to find one of these in the moment that they need it. I, I doubt that rangers are going to spend the whole session like hoarding these. Um, you know, yeah, I don't want to make it like a good berry where you can just hand it out to everybody and absolutely stack them up on it, like fill everybody's pockets who has empty gear slots with, you know, like healing herbs or poison stopping herbs. Um, I think that like when we're thinking of the Lord of the Rings moment, like Aragorn didn't carry King's foil around with him, even though it was highly useful. Why? Well, probably because it's only effective for a short time after it's harvested. Um, and because he probably knew that uh, it was better to try to find something in the moment instead of carrying around like all these drying out herbs over time. So I mean, it, knowing that, I'm a little bit more likely to change the Healy mushroom. Um, but still, you can still go find one and have it be in your pocket like the whole session, you know? Um, so I think that it's, I think that it remains that they should not be something that you can just stack up on. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll think more on these, but okay. So what are some, yeah, bore, like you, we don't want to encourage hoarding on these, right? And it makes sense game world wise. So, um, so this does take away from the DM in a way if it's assumed that rangers can always find herbs in most environments. Uh, I think the DM would have to roll on that. Like, if you're in a barren wasteland, I don't think you could find herbs, you know. Um, it has to make sense. Uh, do, 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 herbalism. First herbalist. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Are they that different? Maybe. Um, the spirit of the talent. Yeah, the, it's like an in-the-moment thing in the talent. Um you know, hopefully people will use it that way, but we can't control everyone's game, of course not, right? Um, but we wanna make sure that we're like not encouraging absurd behavior um, if we can easily exclude it. Um, you know, you can hoard whatever you want, but there's almost, there's very little in the game that's easy to hoard that has such a massive impact, you know? Um, yeah, causing one HP is punitive. How many other class talents potentially damage the characters? 
Ooh, any spellcasting class talent probably. Um, or rolling a one on an attack roll. Yeah, we'll revisit the one damage now that we're like limiting the usefulness of the herb. So like, yeah, I think that it has a three and six chance of healing one HP when eaten, full stop. Um, I think that there's also a chance that it doesn't do anything. You know, there kind of has to be. Well, does there have to be? Um, mm -mm -mm. Maybe we can increase the range on this then. Uh, yeah, because it's so easy for them to pass it. Yeah, I think removing the punitive effect still still keeps it from being spammy, spammable. Um, yeah, let's see. All right, so what? Um, let me see. Like, yeah, like, what would an eighteen, um, <laughs> DC twenty see in the dark for three rounds? Oh, that's that's bold. I don't know. Um, yeah, herbalism, make more about finding food. I think that's already covered by their naturalism, their, uh, wayfinder ability. Um, let me see. Nothing could be that the mushroom is simply past its prime, basically, yeah. Um, increase the range on a talent roll, you only get one arrest. Three and six is fine for now. Yeah, we can always tweak this. We need to play test it now and see. Um, so, yeah, I think the damage could make it fun for sure, but, um, I'm trying, but now that we've limited it to be just impossible to hoard with this herbs retain their effect for one day thing, I think that the, the, the reason we included the damage was to prevent spamming it. And I think that we've naturally removed the spamming now, so we don't need to make them punitive. Um, so, all right, negative herbs and plants for sure. You know, like one thing that a game master could do is roll this in secret and, you know, roll the check. We rarely do this in the game. Like there are times where you roll a secret check. And I could see the the game master rolling the check on behalf of the ranger in secret and then being like, this is what you find, you know? And then um, I'm going to leave that to the game master's decision. Um, yeah, DC 20 is roughly equivalent to a tier 5 spell. Um, I mean, if they have advantage on it, it's probably more difficult to hit than a tier 5 spell. Um, yeah, the player's just doing all their herb rolls every morning to know what they have available. I wouldn't allow that as a game master. I would say like you can't just like you, do you want to spend an hour like herb hunting in the dungeon this morning? You know, if they're out in the wilderness, that's one thing. Like if they're out in the wilderness and they're like, I'm gonna spend the whole morning herb hunting, then so be it. I would start rolling random encounter checks the second they're out in the woods. Um, so okay, removes exhaustion. There's no exhaustion or short rest mechanics in this game. So I'm not totally sure yet how we would do that. I don't want to make rests like useless. Um, herbs only good for a day, then why mess with the gear slots? Um, yeah, I mean, easy come, easy go then, you know? Like I have these cool herbs, oh, but I want to put this giant diamond owl statue in my backpack, I gotta throw an herb out. Um, glowing herb, fast expiration, 18, poison sweat. I think we definitely need to have, um, we need to have some, like some kind of like uh, damage dealing. We need to have some kind of like self buff and we need to have some kind of like, so should the har hardest one, so 15 auto stabilize, the mushroom is basically an auto stabilize. And like, so here's the deal, rangers could just make a, a stabilized dying check too, especially since they're possibly have inherent intelligence bonuses, but like baked into their class, uh, they could just make a stabilized dying check. Um, Wolf's Bane, hinder a monster of a chosen type. Ooh, I think that's kind of cool. So like, uh, and that kind of brings in the favored uh, favored enemy situation without actually making it a class talent because I've never loved favored enemies. So should we say like, um, you know, like super powerful against one foe? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm trying to think of like what an equivalent like thing would be um cure poison cure disease definitely have that berserker mushroom possibly uh big healing could be cool yeah big healing might be cool like big healing um you know because like if they're like i'm gonna go for it like you know gregor's dying and we need him back on his feet like i'm gonna go for the big healing plant um, they spend their action to do it. They have to pass a check, a hard check, a much harder check than casting Cure Wounds. Um, 
and it's very limited by the by the possibility that they fail. Um, Phobane, that's cool. Yeah, Phobane, that's a that's a cool one. Um, mm-hmm, monster species, yeah. Like maybe we do need a Phobane. Like that would be a cool like Phobane. Um, yeah, like maybe we need to make that work in some way contextually. Like if you're in the natural environment of the creature, you can find a phobane. You can't be like, I'm in this cave, I'm gonna look for a phobane for a dragon that, I, that we might encounter later, you know? I think you have to be maybe like somewhere in the environment relevant to the creature that you're targeting. Um, yeah, but then again, is that too fussy? Um, phobane advantage on attacks and damage um, for 1d4 rounds against, a, you know, like... Grants advantage on attacks and da maybe on damage. Um, advantage on attacks is already like a big deal, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll think about and damage. Um, because I could see this, you know, someone being like, "All I have to do is roll a fifteen, and I get advantage on attacks and damage for the rest of the combat." So I don't know. Um, definitely on attacks. Grants advantage on attacks against uh a target creature. Uh, against one creature in sight. Four 1D, four rounds. So, like, maybe you need to be aware of the creature in order to find, I don't know, one creature in sight. Um, advantage on attacks. If it's only for 1D, four rounds, then I could say, and damage against one creature in sight for 1D, four rounds. Um... 10 plus monster level, big healing, the uh, rangers party getting, uh, retreating and prepping for the next battle, late casters get all this love and freedom, but oh no, we can't give marshals a magic flower. Yes, we can. Um, one attack per dose. Advantage only on damage myself, up to the player to hit. Phobane with damage if the DC is 20. The next creature you see. Interesting. Um, creature type, one type of creature, um, yeah, that's sort of like fun, like channeling the like one type of creature for 1d4 rounds, um, but I kind of like, I don't want them to just like be like, I'm looking around this forest for a faux bane that will work on demons, you know, like I think it, I think it has to be somewhat relevant to the environment that they're in maybe, um, I'm just trying to not open it up to being used in a, in a silly way. Um, grants advantage on attacks and damage against one creature. I think like they have to use it in the moment, right? Like against one, cause it, yeah, against um, one creature in sight. Cause like, I feel like you have to be like, oh, that manticore, I know around here that there's light, lichen that grows, it's poisonous to them. I'm still, I'm still kind of stuck on the insight thing. Cause I, I just like don't want them to be like, well, six sessions from now, maybe, and then again, you can't use them overnight. So, um, oh wait a minute, it'll be it'll be gone by tomorrow anyway. So I don't even know if it matters if we define um, against one creature. So you're right, it, it doesn't really matter if we define because like they can't use this to like prep prep for like a boss battle three days from now. Like, um, grants advantage on attacks and damage against one creature type for one d four rounds. Um, that is kind of powerful though. Like, you do have to pass the check. You do have to take your turn to do it. You know, unlike other classes that just have an immediate, like like the Knight of St. Idris can turn on a demonic effect. I don't think, they don't have to pass a check for it and it just naturally increases their attack and damage based on their level. Um, so a creature that you are aware of, yeah, needs to be one type of creature against one creature type, yeah, for 1d4 rounds. So like you can't, it's not like against all enemies. It's like a creature type. Um, so needs one for offense, one for defense and healing. Uh, maybe I just don't want it to become like a, you know, like a shopping list. I think having a limited number of options would be cool. Um, yeah, if there gives disadvantage, declare the foe you are looking for a bane for. You basically have to, it has to be like a creature type. Um, yeah, maybe foe bane should be the DC 18 one. Cause it's like a mega self buff, um, so we'll put we'll put it at the 18, and then we'll find something to put. What should we put in the 15 spot? So we've got um, big healing is the top, like little healing is the bottom. Makes sense. 
Um, we don't want to put another healing one, I don't think, because then they're going to be, it's too much crossover with the priest. Um, stops the effect of a poison. Is 15 going to be like, so 18 is definitely a self buff. Um, let me think on it. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to bold these so that we can see what we're working with here. Um, mushroom. All right. Uh, and I do want to give it a name. Name. Stops the effect of a poison. Although I don't like that it goes over a line. Um, uh, I don't know why I'm formatting this, because we're going to turn it into a table in the future anyhow. So um, let me think. Big healing. Um, see invisible. Cool, but very situational. People are saying they wanted to mimic a ration. I get that. I just think that like their their um, wayfinder ability already includes survivalism. So like I feel like finding a ration using survivalism is already something that they can do. Um, so yeah, maybe an initiative bonus. That would be interesting. An initiative bonus. Um, uh, following consumable. Uh, if you feel you can't use this ability again until this talent oh, again until you complete rest, um, make an intelligence check to find one of the fine consumable herbs. So we don't even need to say when eaten. Um, edible. Then again, does it need to be edible? Doesn't need to be edible necessarily. Because what if you put it on your sword to like hit someone harder? Um, condition me, sticky moss, sticky moss, that's cool, sticky moss, camouflage, monster bait, that's cool. Yeah, initiative bonus. Yeah, I definitely, I want to include a buff that's kind of like, it increases their senses and awareness, right? Because that's a ranger thing where they're like, I am much more alert and can see farther. Um, should we say like advantage on wisdom checks, uh, on wisdom checks to perceive, um, hidden things. <laughs> and should we say for like one hour? Uh, 10 rounds, you know, maybe 10 rounds. It's kind of probably annoying to, to count. Um, Hmm. Yeah, an initiative bonus. That's a thing. Um, initiative. I think maybe we need to say like 1d6 rounds, right? Because like they should probably use that at a time that they're specifically... Um, 1d6 rounds. I think that they're going to use it proactively in a moment they need it, you know? So, like, I'm going to... Let's call it 2d4 rounds so that it's at least, like, they can sit there and scout for a little while with it. Um, 15, increased perception. 15 is essentially coffee. So should we call it, like, a... Um, should we call it like a, what would be like a fun word for coffee? Um, I don't know. We'll come up with something. Um, also, I'm just going to increase this. So, okay. Well, anyhow, I think um, we'll call it something. It'll be like in-world coffee or something. Um, there could be a whole separate page for table of air and effects, cola nut. <laughs> Go juice. <laughs> Joe Berry. <laughs> Joe Berry, I love it. Um, yeah, Blitz Bean. <laughs> you guys are so funny, I love it. Lert. <laughs> um, second breakfast. Rush wart. I kind of like that. Rush wart. Um, yeah, like... Wakeweed, Bright Mind. Bright Mind's a good one. Bright Mind's a good one. 
it doesn't sound like you know illegal or too on the nose um what were we calling that we were calling it bright oh shoot i just lost a bright mind yeah bright mind i, I like that bright brew bright bean um tiny pupils <laughs> jitter bean <laughs> i really i do like jitter bean that's kind of cute too Busy bean, toasted bean. I mean, it has to be a bean of some kind. Good bean. Um, buzz root, rush wart. I kind of do like rush wart. I, I, let's just call it that for now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because it's not, you know, like, I think busy bean is really funny, and I'll probably jokingly call it that, but I don't want to, like, make other people have to use, like, a cute name that's, like, funny to me, but maybe maybe not to them. I don't know. Um, so... Okay, so we're going with rush wart. Whoever came up with rush wart, thank you. That's a great, great idea. Um, yeah, rush wart root or rush wart tea. Lacroix leaf. <laughs> um, all right, so, okay. So we've got some stuff. I think we'll come up with a name later. We'll come up with a big healing effect later. Um, knowing what they do is what matters. And I don't, I don't want to go down the weeds on, like, designing every nook and cranny of this um, class on air. I think we, we want to get the concepts down, and then we'll tweak it. Um, but I don't want to make people sit here and watch me, like, think about wording. Um, you know, like, we're going to have to clean things up. So let's, let's finally, let's think on, you know, an effect for the two spot here. Um, it's usually going to be something really cool. Um, f like, so, like, almost like granting another class talent. That's almost what the two spot is on every, um, you know, every core class. So... Uh, you know, we might want to do something like cover ground that otherwise would not be covered. Um, you know, I don't know if we want to give buffs to any already existing talents for the ranger. I think that would be like maybe superfluous. Um, Hugh's asking why name them. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Hugh. I think that it's possible that we'll remove the names because we want them to work in almost any environment. And, you know, like if someone's like, I'm in the desert, I'm going to look for a, like a rush wart. It might not work then. So, um... <laughs> watching me think about wording is half the fun ambush initiative ambush parry repost damage boost allow ranger to take an animal to hireling hmm dual dual wielding is back dual wielding um this, uh, an animal um the problem with animal companions, and this was even a problem to me with familiars, is that they immediately make action economy like that. Like they, they immediately add like essentially another creature that has to be tracked, initiative damage. Um, and I, I just feel like rangers are loners, you know? Um, so um, another stack of random tables. <laughs> Trackless passing, find hidden paths. And remember that they're operating in you know, on, on a team. So are there any corners of the iconic range that we haven't covered? I know we're refusing to do dual wielding, which is going to make a lot of people mad. Um, uh, you know, we could make this an obnoxious, like, dual wielding thing. Um, <laughs> obnoxious. Like, we could say an effect that would allow the feeling of dual wielding like plus one to armor class when wielding a weapon in both hands or when holding a weapon in both hands and this could stack you know so if if they somehow yeah people don't like dual wielding i know and i'm like do we even incorporate it at this point i'm telling you so many people on kickstarter are gonna be mad um obnoxious dual wielding please would this make people happy if we did it um yeah, they're missing some damage boost. Well, I don't know. I don't know if they're missing damage boost because, like, they're most like one of their most likely things is damage boosting. Um, this is difficult. Hmm, because rangers are known for being kind of like strikers. You know, they're kind of like shoot and run types. Um. I imagine that most rangers will specialize in dexterity. Like, I, I think dexterity is going to be the, the stat of choice. Um, I think what we should do, y'all, I think what we should do is I will eventually make a fighter alternate that is a dual wielder um, for those who really want that. 
I think shoehorning it into the ranger is defeating the purpose of the ranger's iconic build. I, I, I think that we would be shoehorning it in. I don't think it would really, I think it would be like um, not actually making the ranger the best it could be. It would be like appeasing people who want the dual wielding thing. And I don't know if that's the right choice. So um, uh, put an effect, increase to move speed. I just don't think we're going to do dual wielding for this. It's not right. It'd be shoehorning it. It's not right. Um, move, shoot, move is already possible without any special abilities. An effect to put on your weapon. Snares, bonus to weapon choice, increased movement speed would be interesting. Um, increased movement, make a weapon a finesse weapon, interesting. Dual build, duelist. Now, I think, I think like if we're gonna make a dual wield thing, we gotta make it, like we gotta go all in on it. I think we need to make like a dual wielder style class. Um, cause, cause for the people who want dual wielding, that's what they want. They want it to be like what their character's about. So I think we need to make an alternate to the fighter that's a dual wielder specialist. Um, and some already exist out there. Some people have designed them, but I will, I'll make one too if people wanna see what I would do for that. Um, ability to create a poisonous blow dart. Split arrow attack. We can't do anything that would cause action economy to result in two attack rolls. Um, ignore difficult terrain. Possibly true. I feel like it's got to be. So let's look at some examples, right? So the 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 two on um, the priest is gain advantage on casting one spell. You know, that's actually probably the least exciting of them all because priests are kind of like very, priests are already really good. So I actually made their talents a little bit more reined in because of that. Um, wizards get to make a random magic item, which is super fun in my opinion. Thieves get an uh, advantage on initiative rolls, which is a big deal. Priests get the least exciting one, and fighters gain weapon mastery with an additional weapon type. So like rolling a two is extremely a big deal with, with a talent. I think it has to be something that really matters. Um, uh, hide tracks. Yeah, no, I think you guys are all on the right track with the theme, but I think we gotta go big, you know? Um, Driss is, yeah, what a druids, <laughs> druid spells. Um, Reroll hit point dice with advantage. Snares. Divide the damage between multiple targets. Can pass through enemies without a test. These are all cool things, but I, I'm still trying to think of like, you know, like if you roll a two on your talent roll, you should be like flipping the table out of excitement, I hope. Like, unless you're a priest, sorry, but. Um, Additional damage dice. Like, we could say something like choose one weapon, increase its damage die by one step. So, like, your longbow becomes a d10. Um, and if you somehow roll it again, your damage die becomes a d12. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think about, like, increasing the damage die of your weapon? Um... So if you somehow rolled it five times and we're rolling a d20 for your damage die, I mean, first of all, at that point, you'd be a level 10 character. Um, so I'm almost like, fine, you know, it's still, you know, it's still a one to a 20. You're going to roll less than 10 half the time anyhow. Um, so yeah, in decrease the herbal DCs is really cool, but we already have that actually. So um, pinning shot locks down an enemy. Um, that's really hard to define gracefully. Really hard to define. Like if you look at spells like web and stuff, it's it's very difficult to make like a pinning style ability. Um, uh, um, advantage on ammo. Yeah, flip the table exciting. And maybe it's not quite flip the table exciting. Precise shot, extra damage with an arrow. Sniper, explosive range, damage die. That's actually really cool. Your damage dice now explode. It only applies in very, very limited, because if you're rolling a D8, right, for your longbow, like what is the possibility? It's like the, the chances of your damage die exploding are pretty small. Um, random potion. I can't justify that with a ranger's class. Ability. Critical hit on a 17 to a 20 with ranged weapons. We also have to think about if they roll it twice. It's rare, but what if they do? Um, deflector shot, more damage against wounded enemies. It's cool. It's very conditional, though. Um, exploding range damage. I kind of like the exploding benefits. It's fun. Um, that's cool. 
Okay, so all right, so here's I'm I'm um, torn between the options. Um, roll bow damage with advantage. That's actually pretty cool. You can only get it once. Um, crit on a nineteen. I feel like rolling damage with the, with advantage is satisfying, but it's not like yay. You know, whenever you do it, I don't know. It just doesn't feel super exciting to me. It's a great theoretically a great idea, but. Um, inflict disadvantage on the enemy, crit range. Crit range is also kind of lit. I would, I would rather make the damage dice explode than, than to increase the crit range because it's much more likely to happen. Um, yeah, I kind of like the, I kind of like the exploding dice. I know there's alternate rules for it, but it's rare. Like the, um, the alternate rules mode is like, it's not technically like, I don't want to like not give someone something simply because it could exist as an alternate rule. Um, roll twice. Uh, Warlock is cool. Thought we were doing Bard. Advantage. Yeah, thank you for giving me all these ideas, you all. So my opinion is that um, I'm torn between the two things. Exploding damage dice or increasing the damage die of a weapon of your choice. So like a longsword would become a d10, or a longbow would become a d10. Um, yeah, because I don't want to negate momentum mode. Exploding dice favoring smaller weapons is interesting. Yeah, in a way it feels like it stinks because the better the weapon is, the less likely you are to explode. And so I feel like it actually penalizes you. If you, if you increase the damage die of a weapon by one step, it increases its average damage output by one to two points. Um, so... And like increasing the crit range is fun, but it's really not going to come into play except maybe, I mean, if you increase the crit range to 19 to 20, then you're going to critical 10% of the time. Um, is that good? Um, I think I'm going to go with increasing the damage die. It's very unique. Okay, so I think we're going to go with that. Oh, why am I looking at the Warlock? Oh, you know why? Because um, I actually just grabbed uh like i made a duplicate of curse scroll see like we it's all curse scroll i just made a duplicate of it and i'm like just using one of the um one of the templates here um i'm gonna erase the red like i'm gonna delete all the excess stuff in this document and turn it into our new um character classes document i just didn't get around to that yet so sorry <laughs> i left it on warlock and that was confusing so i'm gonna say like um increase the uh, damage die of one weapon of your choice. Of one weapon type. Uh, you can wield. Increase the damage die of, of one weapon of a weapon type you can wield. Increase the damage die. I need to define by how much. Um, Choose one weapon type. Um, increase its damage die by one step. Uh, increase the damage die by one step. Choose a weapon. Could I just say choose a weapon, increase its damage die by one step? Um, I think I have to say type, because I don't want people to think it's like the one weapon, like my one special longbow, and if I lose it, it's gone. Um, mm, increase the damage die of a weapon. Oh, this is hard. <laughs> This isn't quite right. Um, yeah. Delete by, looks like based on enemy instead of weapon. Gotta have a max of D12. I don't know. Why? Wouldn't it be cool if a 10 level range was rolling a D20 on their damage? I mean, that would be silly. Um, D20 is too big. Um, do, do, do. Uh, increase the damage I have one weapon. I know, maybe we should just have it be like, uh, one weapon you can wield, in increase the damage. Die of one weapon to a d12. Uh, or I know what we can like choose one weapon, choose one weapon. It deals, choose one weapon type you can wield. It 
deals d12 damage. Mm. Deal d12 damage with one weapon type you choose. And then we'll say like, uh, to repeat equal choose different weapon type. Is that okay? So it basically like makes your weapon so we're not like, yeah, we're not we're not increasing it to a D ten because I want it to feel cool. And if you can only roll it once, then it really does have to matter. Um I don't think D twelve is too strong at lower levels because that's actually the, what a fighter can deal. Um, but a fighter will always be dealing, like a fighter can deal d12 with a great sword, but they'll always be dealing it at at least plus one damage because of their in, inborn class talents. Um, so like, yeah, taking like, <laughs> taking a d12 dagger actually, that would be cool. Would that be silly? No, because a dagger is a limited ranged weapon. A longbow would be the best choice for this. Like, just, I think just empirically a longbow would be the best choice. Um, I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's ever going to eclipse the fighter. Or, you know, see, like, the fighter is always going to deal more damage on average, no matter what, in this situation because of weapon mastery. And they have a guaranteed increase on the damage. Like, if, you know, a fighter, a, a ranger is most likely going to be rolling a flat roll unless they roll the, the three to six spot talent. Um... A D12 blowgun. <laughs> Very cool, but also like, you know, limited. I feel like, so like I'm trying to think of a worst case scenario weapon to apply this to. Like a blowgun, that's silly, but cool. Um, they don't have, they really don't have proficiency in a blowgun either unless like we give it. A dagger would be flipping cool, but also just it, like by nature not as useful as a longbow. You know, because a longbow has the range to it. And a dagger, although it's a finesse weapon and you could be wielding it you in melee using the finesse property, at best you would be replicating a greatsword. And, um, I mean, could you choose punch? I suppose it's just very limiting. You'd be using your strength modifier. Um, remember that we have to apply this to, like, there's no point in applying it to a, a weapon that the ranger can't wield. So... Um, I think a dagger actually kind of would be cool, and choosing it, I see no reason why choosing a dagger would be superior to choosing longbow. It would make you a better melee fighter with the dagger, which is kind of cool. Um, and I think that, you know, yeah, it increases your average damage on a dagger by, I mean, four points and on a, on a, on a long sword by two points. So um, I think that, you know, the, the argument is that rangers are first and foremost outdoorsmen, not fighters is um, in a way true. Yeah, that's what the majority of their talent support. I mean, this is the the, the, pot, the chance of rolling this on the talent table is very low, and I don't think it has an outsized impact. I st even, even at best, this would not eclipse the ability of a fighter to deal damage on average over time, so I think it's fine. I'm going to leave it. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not a knife. Uh, so again, let's test it. You know, we'll need to do some play testing. I always need to sit and think as well on these uh, before we finally settle on what we're gonna do. Um, you know, so I definitely need to let things sit in base, and I have to think: how does this compare to the thief? How does this compare to the wizard? We might tinker with it a little bit more, but overall, I think that this is cool. I think that it's fun. Like if you were, okay, like if you were a ranger and you rolled this and you decided to choose dagger for some reason, you'd be like, this is flipping cool. You'd be like, this is super cool. My dagger deals a D12. Um, and it would be a strange choice, honestly. I can't think of a situation in which you would choose um, this over like longbow unless you definitely wanted to be a melee fighter but using dexterity. So the two correct choices for this would be longbow or dagger. Um, and yeah, I don't know if you would use it with a ranger. So like, should we, we could, we could say that, 
you know, like, yeah, uh, Fierce Empath is saying extra damage isn't a table flipping reward. I don't know. If you rolled this and uh, I think that most people, yeah, again, like it doesn't have to be like ultimate table flipping. Like I don't think rolling a two and getting weapon mastery on another, like weapon mastery is probably similar or equivalent, you know, additional weapon mastery for a fighter is probably equivalent in excitement level. Um, will this be in the core book? No. Uh, this is an optional secondary class. Uh, yeah, we might, we might want to like insist that it be arranged a bow. You know, but then it's like basically telling someone they have to use it for a longbow, which is kind of like, eh. Um, yeah, like, interesting interesting use case on a dagger. Like, how do we, we could fix this by removing dagger proficiency for the ranger, even though that's weird. Um, but like, choosing it for dagger would also be kind of weird, but fun. I mean, what about choosing it for spear? You can, I mean, I feel like choosing it for spear would be better because the spear you can, it would be the same, you know? Choosing it for spear would be equally cool because you're throwing the spear. Like, let's say you want to be a, a ranged fighter who's focused on strength. Um, you could choose this for spear and then suddenly become like the best boar hunter in the land, you know? Um, I think it's interesting. Yeah, I think it's cool. You don't have to choose dagger if you don't want to. If thematically you don't like it, that's fine. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think we'll leave it for this for now. We'll sleep on it. Um, definitely throw me some comments. Join the Discord server if you haven't. It's an open Discord server. You can find, just Google like the Arcane Library Discord and it'll take you to an open join link. Um, and like, let me know your thoughts on this because none of this is totally set in stone. There's still layout to do. There's still wording to fiddle with. But I think overall, we've come up with a concept for a ranger that I think is really cool and thematic, very Aragorn. Um, no spell casting, no dual wielding. Um, an effective fighter, a striker type character, and I think we've done a good job on it. So um, let's, let's say, let's, let's call it right now, we just crossed a two hour mark, which is a long stream and I think a good length. So um, someone's asking, can you remove the two repeat part since you choose one type? Yeah, you're right, you don't need to. Um, we can get rid of that. Um, yeah, there would be, yeah. Uh, redundancy is not real on this because you can just choose a different type. Um, so that is that is it. Thank you guys for being a part of this live stream. I think we came up with some really cool ideas that I probably would never have come up with on my own, um, which is why doing this live is fun. And I hope that hearing some of the reasoning behind uh, why I would yes, no, something for this design was helpful. If you decide, decide to design a class for Shadow Dark, some of the things that I consider, maybe you will see why, and then um, also incorporate that into your decision-making process. So I hope it was helpful. And um, very cool, you all. Thank you. We'll schedule the Bard as soon as we have a good date for that. I'm still not totally sure the next best date for that, but the Bard's going to be an interesting one indeed. And we'll talk about it live as well. And I'm excited for that one too. So thanks, everybody. And I will end this stream for now, and I will catch you guys on the next one. All right, have a good afternoon, everybody. All right, bye.